All right, man. Here we are. Here we are every Tuesday, man, for the Reminisce Show. Rick here on the traditions of St. Kofa, man. You know what I mean? Got to go back to collect what we may have forgotten and just to, you know, reminisce, man. The good times, man. The foundations, man, especially the foundations of Toronto. And today, man, we got special guests, man. A legend out here, man. I know he's a humble dude and just, you know, cool, but yo, <laughs> legend out here, man. We Dan throwing flowers, Cole. man. We, we like to... We like to throw flowers on the show and give them to the people that we love while we can. So big ups and mad respect to you, Danny O of the Mighty Monolith Crew. Yo, I appreciate it, man. Much love to both of you, man. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate the words. It's humbling and it's amazing, bro, Um, especially because, as I guess you guys might know, but literally as we speak today, May 4th, it was 30, 30 years ago today I got my start in the game. So I'm proud to still be here, proud to be, you know, amongst brothers like you who show love and constant support for what it is I do. And, you know, you guys are part of this movement as well. So I appreciate y'all. True yes, man. absolutely. Which which is a phenomenal. I, I, we didn't really plan to align it. But, yeah, we've been yeah. doing this every Tuesday almost for a year. And just the same as you, you know, we just try to represent the culture in whatever ways we can. I mean, we, we, each one of us have, have got multicultural kind of loves for the for the game. I've been writing and doing hip hop and, you know, I'm, I'm doing a little pornography now, which is part of my <laughs> love. So it's so dope. And, you know, Log- Logic's doing his community service. He's been an MC. He's been a writer, he's been a journalist. Yeah. And I, it's so dope to see you not only get into wrestling, because, you know, a lot of hip hop people <laughs> are just like, Yo, there's 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 very much parallels between hip hop and wrestling, but it's you know we also yeah. did want to talk about your acting a bit because sure. when I do some of my pornography and stuff, I actually didn't really start with porn. I actually started with indie movies and stuff. So okay. you know we were we're gonna respect your time for sure, get a good strong half an hour, but we'd like to talk sure. about the diversity of Danny O. But yeah. but we do have the clip, the very yeah. first clip, we, and we'd oh, like yeah. to show the people who haven't seen it the okay. classic clip of you on Electric Circus. Oh, all right. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this is this is super. I mean, awesome. yeah. What a gem. Yeah, I was posting it today cuz yeah, here we are. Oh, hey. We we're going to show the second half of it so we get you and then the okay. the, the, cel- sure. the celebration part. Okay. So, here we go. So, you want to you want to introduce it? You want to introduce it? Oh, go ahead, man. May 4th, 1991, 30 years ago today, this is how I got my start. Daniel and Lindo P, partners of rhyme doing can't test me live on electric circus uh uh respect the good vhs quality Lyrical poo poo. So Big Daddy Kane. Bro, it's all Big Daddy Kane. Right? Like it's a total ripoff. <laughs> but it's pure skill too. Here's how we won the contest. This was dope. No internet, man. It was pure phone calls. People phoned in their votes. Did did you feel like you were going to win? Or how did you feel right here? I knew it, man. You knew it? I knew it. (laughs) Yeah. And our contestants are all here. Yes, they are. Mercury 
I would. I was cocky, man. I mean, I did a song called "Can't Test Me," bro. I was just, I was pretty cocky. That's okay. hip hop. Yeah. Gifted a black guy, one thousand seven hundred thirty-seven votes. Wow. Uh, respectable, respectable. respectable. Oh, Kunji we'll wrap up contest, eighteen hundred and thirteen. <laughs> Very cool. <laughs> Very cool. Oh man. So yo, so yo, oh, man. man. Congratulations. Thanks a lot, man. Thirty years yo. today, bro. Thirty years wow. today. Yeah. So you went to that LL Cool J show? Did you meet him? Absolutely, bro. I got. I'm, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go grab the picture. I got a picture and yeah, autograph. With please, him. please and, do. <laughs> and and some, I'm, I'm gonna show it to you guys in two seconds. Something real quick about why I even entered that contest. This is some serious uh, Toronto rap history for you. Is this? This was the second Electric Circuits rap off contest that they had. The first one was for tickets to an MC Hammer concert, which I said, nah. And I didn't. I didn't decide to. to. Now the guy who won. I don't know if you y'all remember Frank Morell. Um, he was he was a white dude who was eventually part of a group called Brothers from the Ghetto. Uh, DJ Starting from Scratch was actually part of it. Anyways, Frank Morell won the rap off contest. Months later, he's got this music video out. So when they did their second contest and said they got tickets for LL, I was like, OK, firstly, I'm down with seeing LL. But the last guy who won the contest has a video out. And as a kid, I was 13 years old. I'm like, maybe this is my shot. You know what I'm saying? So we put together that can't test me thing. I didn't have a beat. That's not my beat. We ripped it off of some record. Like, <laughs> I didn't know what a producer was. I've never been inside of a studio in my life. All I know is that that other dude got a video. And I literally remember, and I'm going to tell you this story. I wrote, I was like I said, I was cocky. I wrote on this piece of paper and handed it in with the cassette. I go, trust me, this is the winner. And can't test me, obviously. That's what it was about. Just you can't test me. Uh, submitted it. And uh, they chose us. Um, we had to go to a nightclub the night before the broadcast. They chose 10 out of 100 something or other contestants. Imagine only 100 something rappers uh, in a, but that's how many, I think it was like 100 something. 10 of us went up on, uh, on stage and they were going to choose the top two. And when Lindo and I got on stage, Lindo was my DJ. You'll hear in the video, at the beginning of the video, I introduce him right. as my DJ Lindo P because Lindo was DJing house parties like when I was in elementary school. So we're talking about little kids' birthday parties, right? And I would show up and I would rap and that's how he discovered me. So he would take me to his crib and on his turntables, he would mix beats back and forth and we'd do recordings. And so we recorded Can't Test Me That Way. I remember he used Moni in the middle and the instrumental just, he flipped it back and forth and that's how I spit it. Wow. When we got chosen, he was supposed to be on the turntables, but we didn't. We weren't bringing turntables to the show. So we show up and it's like, do you guys have turntables? Like, no. <laughs> so we're like, what are we going to do? And that's when I discovered that Lindo P could do that dance hall chat like nobody's business. So he said, yo, I'm going to grab the mic at the end of the song. And I was like, cool. Done. So we got on stage. Everybody saw a light skinned guy with a high top fade. Addy said, the, I was trying to be Big Daddy Kane. Everything was Big Daddy Kane for me back then. And someone shouted out, hey, it's Kid in Play. And I said, nah, I'm Danny O, and you better remember it. And everyone went, whoa. <laughs> and and, yeah. and Rich and I had confidence out of nowhere. And I was like, bam. So we did the song. He obviously wasn't on the turntable, so he did his piece. Obviously, that's what we ended up doing the next day. We decided the day of the broadcast to be partners in rhyme because we had submitted the tape as MC Danny O and DJ Lindo P. And wow, considering that, that he wasn't the DJ in the traditional hip hop sense anymore, we decided to group, make a group name. And literally the day of, we're like, yo, yo, call us partners in rhyme. And then anyway, we did this thing on uh, live and, and one. I'm going to get that picture. Give me a second. Watch please, this. please. And I actually, have like another clip. I actually have like that another clip I want to line up, but to get that ready, man. But yo, that, that, that's pretty cool, man. Me and LL Cool J. So Jeez. I have had this. Um, basically framed since, I guess, 91. Let me see if I can put it to the camera properly. Yes. Oh, man. Oh, man. Uh, got the crew, everybody, man. What? So, if that... I oh, he's got the fisherman see. hat? Yeah, yeah. Man. So, he's sitting beside Lindo, and I'm up here. 
and right under is the autograph. And this is going to make you laugh because this is a double frame. And then the other side of the frame is Hulk Hogan's autograph. Oh. <laughs> Hulk Hogan, man. Yo. That guy, that's, that's so Danny O. That's crazy. That's so Danny O. You mentioned the wrestling off top. I haven't been involved in wrestling for a long time, but uh, yeah, pretty big fan. So LL and Hulk Hogan share a frame. Amazing. Yo, I actually yeah. want to. I have one this, second. Okay. They're almost the same. They're almost the same kind of people in their cultures. That's kind of funny. My apologies, bros. I, I uh, pulled out my headphones and didn't catch your last sentence. Oh, oh no, no, I was just saying, like, and in, in wrestling culture, LL and, and Hulk Hogan have some kind of interesting parallels. But and that's just a random, yeah. random thought and conversation. Well, I'll, I'll give you a random thought that combines the two. And this is the truth. To this day, so my brother and I, I got a brother three years younger than me. He's involved in entertainment well as a producer, editor. And um, we both grew up big wrestling fans. We'd wrestle each other all the time. And uh, bro my brother is named Brian and his wrestling name is Blade. And I go by Mayhem. Here's the okay. reason why. Because uh, we used to check out wrestling pay-per-views by a Bredgen's house, and he had a younger brother. So we would have tag team matches after me and my boy versus my brother and his brother. And my boy and I were a tag team called Destruction. He was Terror, and I was Mayhem. Because in LL Cool J's Mama Said Knock yeah. You Out, there's a line where he goes, Destruction, Terror, right, right, and right. Mayhem, pass me a sissy right. song, sucker. Yeah. So we, Slay we him, farmers. We right. looped that part of the song poorly, very poorly, but we looped it, and that was our entrance music. So we were destruction. He was terror, oh, and I'm mayhem. So to this day, if me and my brother get her, start fucking around and wrestling, and we commentate as we fight, like mayhem has got him now, folks. You know, we're still up on it. So that's Yo. the tie-in. That's the tie-in right there. <laughs> Yo, oh, man. Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> so I have this other uh, video clip, but before that, man, I want to share. Um, this, this this photo, man. Yo, we we took this photo, Carabana. Oh, wow. Carabana, yeah. Two thousand and eight. Yes, <laughs> I know it's two thousand and eight because of the CD, bro. We would come with a new yeah. CD every year, and that's the two thousand and eight one. Yeah, man. Wow. I, I just had to pull that up, man. You know what I mean? Because the uh, selling CD and, and just being on the grind and hustling in person, man. Like having conversations with people. Wait, can you speak a bit about like the, the CD game for a quick minute? Because you know everything's sure. Now. Yeah, yeah. For sure, that's a good question, man, because that is definitely, definitely part of the grind. If you're an independent hip hop artist, especially here in Canada, man, you know, and, and you guys know this from personal experience, if you're not grinding, if you're not hustling, and if you're not pushing, no one's gonna do it for you. There's no one out there with big bank, you know, plastering your, you know, posters across the city or doing any of that. So I've always had that hustle mentality and that hustle mindset mm -hmm. and so carabana just happened to be one of the many toronto events that was like it made sense to show up with it like i see the strap around my shoulder just full of cds because back in the day when people were buying cds half the time bro I, like this is how it worked yeah i didn't even have to go around and say hey man you want to buy a cd it'd be brothers like yourself you just chop it up with people you know toronto's a big city but it's a small city you know what i'm saying we've known each other for years and it's like what's good i'm like yo we got this new cd out Oh, yeah. And we pull it out and be like, yo, five yeah. bucks or a 10 bucks or something like that. Right. So I, I realize that everywhere I go, Bridget, I've sold CDs at, at, at Blue Jays games just because I just decided to keep one in my pocket. Right. Because right. somehow, some way, someone might go, hey, what up, man? Are you Daniel? I'm like, what's up, man? And, the, and they will always put themselves on the spot about when's the next record coming? I'm like, got it right here. So, <laughs> so my guy, I have left Caravana with like hundreds of dollars in my pocket. Yeah. And obviously, like you said, we're in a streaming era now. And that whole hustle, that part of the hustle. Right. is lost on this new generation because one it was cool to actually have a physical product to say look i created this, this is my latest project and for most people it was cool to have it you know what i'm saying and to buy it directly from the artist how often does that happen you know like we grew up going to the store copping cds or tapes or records so yeah i made use of that and definitely hustled and definitely made it part of like i had no shame in my game a lot of people don't like doing it and trust me it, it's 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 something that um, I actually enjoyed doing, man, because I figured if people like my music, why not make sure they have it? 
you know, and then put them on the spot, bro. Cause you know how many times it don't always work. I get people going, Danny, yo, what's up, man? I get, what's good. How you doing? Yeah, man. Yo, love your shit, bro. Your shit is dope. I'm like, respect. Thank you, man. It's like, yo, you're like, honestly, one of the dopest MCs in Toronto. Thanks a lot, man. It's like, yo, you, you putting out something new? I'm like, yeah, it's right here. You down? You want it? Like, ah, uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I don't really have money i literally got it's funny this is a caravana picture i love that this photo's up yeah. i literally had someone at caravana say this to me yo are you gonna be here later like <laughs> oh like i was gonna stay in that spot because he's gonna go god knows where to get cash <laughs> and come back to that spot where i'd right. be waiting right yo, i've had hilarious hilarious responses it's all fun and and, and good oh, man. No, no, because you know what I, I'm, I'm thankful to say that i've had many years 30 years of, of a lot of support so thanks for this memory man no doubt, man. Yo, I got really, very super quickly oh, my God. Su <laughs> super super quickly i just got to ask yeah. you as a former as a former dread man to yeah. another dread man have you have you ever thought of bringing your locks back because you were kind of like a Busta rhymes or you, I, I mean you were on a socrates level like I, I, I had my dreads for nine years, and I was like, yo, is will Danny O ever cut his locks? So when when you cut your locks, I was like, yo, I don't want to get too deep into it. But, yeah, have you ever thought no, about but it? It's a great question. As far as growing them back, no. I have them. I don't know what you – they're literally, like, I, behind I me. Mine. I have yeah. mine. Yeah. I'm glad yeah. because there's people – so tell me, Addy, if you feel the same way, man, because I've been asked this question before, and as I explain to people, when I started growing my locks – I actually started going through this kind of maturation phase, bro. Mm. And I was learning, I was becoming more spiritual. I had mm. changed my diet. So I didn't fully become like a Rastafarian, but I studied up on Rasta and learned about the principles of it and the peaceful mindset, uh, a, a, clean, a clean body, living iry. You understand, like these things that were the principles of Rastafarianism mattered to me as I grew my dread. So as I grew them, they became that important to me. To where maybe like you, you tell me, but I had mine for 13 years. And throughout, I'd say 12 and a half of those years, I'm like, never cutting them, never cutting them, never cutting them. And I got to a point, like Bridget, and I would have dreams where in the dream, I get a haircut or they fall out or something happens. And like clockwork, every time I would wake up out of the dream and I check my hair to make sure they were still there because it like freaked me out. Like the, to lose them was so horrible. Mm. Eventually, the dream started transitioning. And I don't know about y'all, but I'm a little bit of like a neat freak and a, a cleanly hygiene folk, you know, like I make, you know what I'm saying? And I started seeing my dreads differently because one, they were, I don't know how about you, I was losing them on the side. Thankfully, I wasn't balding, but on the side, they were getting thin. So I would take a lock and then I'd twist it into a next lock and I'd have like one root with four prongs on it. And it'd be, yes. It started looking weird. And, and, so for reference, for anybody listening out there, the last video I did with them was when I did the Perfect Strangers album with my cousin Promise. And we have a song called Ghetto. Our first video, Ghetto. I'm wearing my dreadlocks and a ponytail. So you can see that my sides are just fro and that there's dreads. I had a dreadhawk by accident. <laughs> so when we were finished with the video, we watched it back. I looked at the video and I was like, Nah, man, that 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 dreadhawk is not the move. And promise is like, what do you mean? I thought that's what you you did that on purpose. And I'm like, so you thought I was doing it on purpose? And they're like, okay. So I made a decision, and I was like, I'm starting to feel the opposite now. I'm feeling sub, you know, conscious, subconscious about it. And um, anyways, when I finally cut it, the Perfect Strangers album for anyone who knows about the group. That's it was the first photo shoot I had ever taken without the dreads. It was literally the day after because wow. I had to retake photos because I had finally come to this decision where I felt conscious, mm. self-conscious was the word I was looking for about yeah. my dread. But so no, Addy, I don't I don't feel that they're gonna come back. I feel like that's a phase of my life that I've you know, I'm still just as spiritually minded and I'm I don't eat meat and all that stuff. I kept and I kept the dreads too. So yeah, this is this is the longest my hair has been in a minute thanks to COVID. Right. Good question, bro. Yeah, it's a still a, it's a you know it's a thing. I'm still a dread at heart. There we are. You are, man. Same here. Be Rasta, yo. Straight yeah, up. right. Well, for sure, for sure. Indeed, man. But yo, I, I just want to play this real quick, man. Oh I, man, this is crazy. Man, let me play this real. Yeah, man. Yo. <laughs> this catch my breath from one here from the bus stop <laughs> because my boys couldn't be here. We're part of the Lyrical Coalition. Which is our family here in Toronto. I can barely breathe. <laughs> peace down with it. There's other groups, including myself and my group partners around. We got 
Effervescent Play, Black and Charisma, the X Men Psycho Section, of course, MVP, like I said. And Did that's you all. Come from smoking or something? Like no, bro. Like <laughs> I was running. I ran. Rap performers have. <laughs> I ran from the bus. So, so you see why? Okay, there representing yeah. model. So, yeah. so two things about that clip, man. So I love that yeah, clip. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm glad I even got in the doc because the doc was about Toronto hip hop and they had selected specific groups. MVP was one of them. And MVP was YOK, Simo and LC, now known as Botany Hill or my boy Courtney Cunningham, who's my photographer. So this album behind me, uh, this one yeah, with my yeah, daughter, yeah. like Courtney yeah. did. He was just talking. Courtney did um, the photography for it. So he's still in the game in that way. And uh, obviously, YO became part of Monolith. But that uh, and, and they were managed by MVP. Sorry, by Farley Flex. Right. And so right. they were being interviewed in front of their high school, Woburn Collegiate. They told yeah. me about it. And I was like, cool, I'll show up. And when I was on the bus, I could see the crew and the camera people and the, everyone. And I'm like, oh, shit, they done already started the documentary. I was late. So I'm running. I run off the bus with me trying to get my little camera time, I guess. And so literally they go, and who are you? And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, um, I just came from the bus. And so I'm trying to catch my breath from running. Yo. And um, but you know what? I'm so happy that they put that clip in the film, because what people might not know is I was rattling off what would inevitably be members of Monolith. So I said Partners in Rhyme, which you know, obviously, from the yep. Electric Circus thing. Partners in Rhyme eventually became myself and my man Spider-Man, now known as Parker, one of the members of Monolith. Um, obviously, Lindo continues to, to, to this day to do his thing in the realm of dance hall and being mm -hmm. a DJ. But Partners mm -hmm. in Rhyme became us two. Effervescent Play, I mentioned, was Grimace Love and my boy TJ. TJ, to this day, is my sound engineer. So he records and mixes all my albums. So we still family in that way. Black yeah. with Charisma was a duo with a dude named Black Mantis and Charisma. Charisma is monolith. He produced yeah. this whole album. So right. all those names were rattling off were the members of the Lyrical Coalition. And the Lyrical Coalition that year, so that's the year 94 when we, we met up with The Horde. The Horde was Corey D's, Black Cat, Nish Rocks, and them, man. Hey. And so when the Lyrical Coalition and the Horde became one, Monolith was founded. So that uh, clip uh, was right before we became Monolith. And that's why I dropped the name. Hey, the hey. Yeah. That's what's up, man. Yeah, oh, that's man. history there. Yo, thank Yo. you for sharing. That, man. That, that, that's classic right there, man. Yeah. Oh. I've never even been asked that. So good luck, man, for finding them clips. Yeah, 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 for sure. Like, like hey, man, like, I, I love history and, and the foundations and just, like, th this whole documentary, I encourage any, anyone watching this to go check it yeah. out on YouTube, man. It's called for Make sure. Some Noise, yeah. uh, 94 documentary. There's a lot of people in there, man. You got, like, Motion in front of, like, Oakwood right. Collegiate, man. There's, like, Jellystone, um, right. uh, um, uh, Ghetto Concept, Ghetto like, concept, yeah. artists, you know, it, it's... Yeah. And it's, it's really, you know, well put together, actually. You know what's dope about that uh, documentary? And I for, I didn't know this until I rewatched it like many years later. Yeah. There's a clip of a CKLN. If you guys, guys remember yeah. CKLN 88.1 yeah. at Ryerson University where they used to do the power yeah. move, DJ X's show. And we used to go through there all the time. That was like quintessential hip hop for anyone in Toronto back in the day. Saturdays from one to four. Never forget it. Yeah. Anyway, there's a clip of a bunch of dudes freestyling at CKLN, including Thrust and a lot of other Toronto mans and most deaf. Right. Yes. And I don't yep. and, and I'm like Classic. and I'm watching the documentary going, wait, what? <laughs> like, I don't know what he was doing in Toronto. I don't know what he but yeah, so he's, he's in there. there. And right. I I would second yeah. that recommendation. Go peep that that's some Toronto hip hop history for your ass. Indeed, man. Indeed. Yeah. Yeah, man. <laughs> Yo, I um very quickly because we do want to respect your time. Could we possibly have a part two of this later on this year? Because we're not gonna oh, get course, to all course. our questions. And and no like, problem. There's so I when we were doing some research, I was like, I mean, I you know, I check your stuff, but I, I, I didn't realize how much stuff you put in. And there's some of us we're not gonna get to. Really quickly, I want to ask about some history you made when when you made Bossman. Because I've okay. done some videos with I done some videos with Freddie Fame, but like yeah, I yeah. am a huge, huge Chip Foo fan. So Big when I when, when when you made that song with Chip Foo, I'm like, yo, and you know, I, I got two Jamaican parents, so I'm like yeah. Yo, this song is fucking amazing. And <laughs> like you, lyrically, 
lyrically, it's I always right. wanted to tell you that, man. And like, there's other Thank things you, we're not man. gonna get to, but I just wanted to tell you, I always rated that song as far as one of the legendary Canadian American songs, because like, there's few Canadian American yeah. songs that are like timeless, and I'm like, yo, this is like shows right. the potential of the culture. I'm like. Socrates and Pharaoh Monch kind of level. And that song is, I was like, yo, classic lyrics. So like, what Thank did you. you guys record it together or? We did. I'm like? happy to say that. Yeah, it was really dope. First of all, thank you, bro. And I want to acknowledge you because I remember you doing, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but it was like a year end article and you had mentioned Boss Man as one of your top joints. It was either a, 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 a an article about Canadian American do, uh, joints together or whatever but thank you for shouting it and thank you for giving it that much love um here's how it happened man um really really dope story actually i was at an audition and the audition was for a beer commercial i want to say bud and they needed a dj now i've auditioned for tons of different things especially when i had the dreads um even though i didn't have them at the time i was auditioning for mcs and djs all the time uh, my dude named Marvin Prince, shout out to him, showed up at the audition with K Cut from Main Source. Right. Now, K Cut ends up getting this gig. He was booked for it, which makes sense because he's an actual DJ. But um, while we were there, the two of them were talking to me, especially Marvin was talking about how they're working with Chip Foo now. And do I know, you know, which producers am I working with and stuff? And I'm like, yo, Charisma from Monolith, as far as I'm concerned, is one of the most slept on producers on the planet. And I recommend Charisma because we're working on an album together right now. And um, yeah, he's like, OK, cool. Now, I just threw him that noise because I was like, you know, it was just an honest answer, but I was like, Ah, eh, sure. You you're working with Chipu, you know, because uh, you always hear people's working with people, and you hear name drops a lot. Well, sure enough, he hits up Charisma, and Charisma hits me up, and he's like, "Guy, Chipu's coming to my house right now, bro. Like he's gonna come listen to beats." And I'm like, "For real?" He's like, "Yeah. Do you want to come?" I'm like, "Yeah." So yeah. I, I, yeah. I'm like, of course. So I reach, and Marvin's there. Chipu's there. And I'm like, hey, man, what's good? And we're going through all these charisma beats, and it's dope. Chip Fu's loving them, and he's he's choosing some. And it was kind of funny because some of them, he's like, sorry, Dan chose that one already. And I'm like, I don't know why you're, like, punking him. Don't play him beats that are chosen. But he's like, yo, this is dope. So then he plays one of them. So I I'm in the midst of this pre-production session in Charisma Studio, and I'm like, if I'm not going to ask, this is a waste of my time. I'm like, bro, I would love to do a record with you, man. Like, if you're feeling these beats, let's just pop one out. Yeah. And he was cool as hell. To this day, I keep in touch with him and say what up every now and again. And he was like, let's make it happen. Um, yeah. Obviously, the beat got selected because one of the ideas, obviously, is you want to respect Chip Fu's flow. He's the double time master. And I was also yes. like, and Charisma was like, dude, are you going to double time with Chip Fu? And I'm like, ah, I'm going to go and give it a shot, bro. And so I was very proud you of can. the fact that, yeah, you know, but, uh, and, and you know, I'm, I'm not like Chip Fu. So we have different styles, double time, but we could both do it. And I did it my own way. He obviously did what he does best. And I was so proud of the fact that <clears throat> we did, as you, as you asked, got to record it together so it wasn't like a send me your files type of song we were in the studio together and he came with the hook i didn't know he was going to do that so he came with the hook came with this killer verse and on top of that he was so humble that he was willing to take some feedback because when he originally ended his verse to me it was four bars short and i said i feel like it needs a four bars and so he wrote those extra four bars in the studio i think it was like the facebook twitter lines he did and anyway and then i thought it needed another verse and so I wrote my second verse in the studio, mm -hmm. and then the rest is history. And then big shout out to my man, E. Andre Espinay, a bridging of mine from Francis right. Lieberman, Lindo P., also a Francis Lieberman in okay. from Scarborough. Okay. And, uh, because he had, he was throwing an amnesia anniversary party. Anyone in Toronto knows that amnesia well, is like yeah. the greatest. Uh, and and Addy knows exactly what I'm talking about because I was right beside him, I believe, when he got those very glasses and that nose from Shock G himself, rest in peace. <laughs> so now you know the timing, Addy, because Chip Fu was brought to that event and was one of the many performers at that event, we scheduled the video shoot for the day after. So Chip obviously rocked. Addy, as he is always, oh front row. I think I was front row with you for that one. You were right beside me. Yeah, and then we yeah. shot 
boss man the next day. And shouts to Freddie Fame, of course, because that was his concept. He just said, listen, we'll green screen the whole thing and I'll make it look cool. I had no idea he was putting me in a plane and the Sky Dome and all that <laughs> other stuff. It, it just it was dope when it came, you know? So, yeah, yeah big, was, big rest in peace shout out to Shock G. It's so amazing you have those. And I'm so man. happy to say that I was right beside you when you caught them shits. And I remember saying, I think I said it to you. I said, there is no one in this fucking building yeah. who deserves that shit more than you, bro. Facts. Addy, yeah. is the, Addy is the front row king of Come this on. whole shit. Come oh, on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It, I was I was so I I actually caught when when Shock died like rest his soul like I I was like yo this is I have a few memorabilia I have like Rock him stuff I have cannabis stuff I have I have like Diggable Planet stuff but this is probably my number one hip hop memorabilia like as far as yeah. physical it objects is. I'm is. like this is so legendary I will yeah. never forget the moment this happened when it was when 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 Shock threw them and they were yeah. flying in the air. I, I never in my life felt so feral and animalistic. Like <laughs> I, I, I will kill anybody. Yeah. Like yeah. cause shot. Like I was screaming every lyric. I was really oh, I I felt connected. Shot and I like, believe. yeah, it was really one of the most movie cinematic moments in my life. And I caught them, and yeah. I was just so happy. But like, it was so great to see you there, and you were really supportive, and, and you were just like, "Yo, can I just try them on once?" And I was like, "Yes." Oh, so I. Yeah. Yes, you did. You did. Yeah, I will never forget that either. I was like, yeah. uh, you're, you were right there. I was like, yeah, try them on. So you tried them on, and then you handed them back, and it was, right. it was one of the greatest moments. So I was really, you know, it's great that it was, a, you know, your 30th anniversary on today as well. But yeah, you know, we yeah. all can reflect on that shock G moment oh, and like. Oh, for sure. I'm, 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 I'm actually happy I got to share that moment with you, bro, because obviously we've been to, probably you probably more than me, but we've been to like countless hip hop shows mm -hmm. and even though we're artists what i love about you dog is you've never lost your heart for this shit being yeah. a fan is not yeah. something that's beneath you to be and i have a moment like that too that i want to share at a different amnesia anniversary that was the big one i think that might have been anniversary 15 a year 15, or two yeah. yeah about a year or two prior i can't remember which one it was big daddy kane headlined amnesia and you guys called me correct i was a total big daddy kane ripoff as a kid uh, i grew my hair like him i rapped like him and like and i yeah bro and i knew every lyric so when big daddy kane was on stage in amnesia and this by the way is somewhere on youtube he's i'm front i'm doing the addy that day i'm front row were you at that one it was at cool house rest in peace cool house and i was front row I'm spitting every single Kane lyric it is. I remember Cardi was on stage and later he came up to me. He's like, Dan, how do you know every single Kane lyric he ever wrote? I go, dog, I know every Kane. Kane is my dude. If it wasn't Kane, I wouldn't rap the way I rap without Kane. So here's my moment, Addy. And again, I got to okay. find this somewhere. It's on YouTube. He's performing raw and he's ripping it on stage. And then he decides he's going to do the crowd walkthrough. So Kane comes oh. off stage. He's still he's still spitting, um, and he's going through and he's shaking hands and stuff. And I'm still lip syncing my ass off, rapping along with him. He he finds me, hands me the mic for two bars. I can't right off the top. I can't remember the two bars right now. I, I got to find the clip. And I spit two just two of the raw bars into his mic. He takes it back. We're kind of like shaking hands, and he keeps walking. And even all this 30 year shit of me doing my shit, that's still a highlight for me. You know what I'm saying? The hip hop fan to be like, I just spit two bars of raw into Kane's mic during his show. Yeah. And I can highlight like you. I can yeah. reminisce on like catching Shock G's glasses. Like it's that big a deal. And I think that's why the fuck we still fuck with this shit, bro, because we yeah. care about it that much. We love yeah. it that much. We can yeah. humble ourselves and go, yes, I'm still a fan. Of course, yeah. I'll ask for a motherfucking picture and an autograph. That's why I am who I am today. I ain't mm. going to pretend that I started this shit. So, mm. yo, I'll, I'm, you know, yeah, that's yeah. that's uh, that's something I wanted to share, too. That's a big that's moment peace, for me. Man. Yo, man. I'm so glad you got that. I'm so glad you got that moment with Kane. You deserve it because Thank Kane you. only wants to pass that to real MCs who know the shit and who won't no. mess up the moment. And it's Come yeah, on. and, and I, I know he was probably yeah. like word gave it to a, the right motherfucker. It felt so. well, you know, that's how I felt because I felt like he could see that I'm lip sync. I'm I know all the lyrics, 
and he just threw that he held the mic right but he's given yeah. it to me to do those two bars and i felt like that was an acknowledgement like he knew what was up yeah. For, yeah. for all i know he saw me the whole show it's doing every single lyric you know what i'm saying but i will say that's not the first time i met him i did meet him at another show at the phoenix in toronto years before that and i do have a photo and it's i'm sure it's on my facebook or instagram so i did actually get to meet him and thank okay. him for his influence and i handed him a couple of my cds or whatever i'm like yo there wouldn't be a me without you and he was mad cool and so i did at least get that you know i met my guy my superstar moment um you know in my yo, life i love that yeah. man it's about, you know give, giving the people who inspired us like that they're flowers you know no what doubt mean? And even myself as a young guy coming up, seeing your videos on, on much music, like Dear Hip Hop. I know we didn't get time to talk about that today. That's we'll all right, man. We got like, we can do 20 minutes, uh, about 15 yeah. more if you want. It's up to well, you. Well, hey, man, like okay. that. Whatever video, you got. Like, for me, like okay. growing up, like that, 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 was my, that was my shit, man. Like just like the, the beat and everything, like your flow, it was like perfect to me. Thank you, you man. Know I mean? And seeing like the video and, and like just a Scarborough and all the man them out there, like, like y'all yeah. just captured it since, like, I, I like, Man, like, can can you take us back to like that day, like recording and and sure. you know maybe inspiration behind the song and? Yeah, I will actually. I will. This I got an interesting story for you if you haven't heard it. Um, so big shout to Scam, super huge shout to Scam Damn. who produced the joint because, Thank as you. I've always said, and I said at my release party when we did the 20th anniversary of the album. Um, uh, there's no dear hip hop without Scam. So he he obviously he made the beat. And the funny thing is. So it came out on Rap Essentials Volume 1, Who those who don't right. know. I never released it as a single. I never put out a record. It was on a compilation. That's how Dear right. Hip Hop came out. So it came out with 11 other songs on this album. One of them was Boiling Point by Concrete Mob, and, and Scam made that beat too. That's the beat I wanted. Okay. Right? And he's like, nah, Concrete, Concrete Mob got the beat. And I was like, okay, cool, because this, this is the dope. This is still my favorite Scam beat. Like that fucking yeah. beats amazing bro like, i love that's why i got concrete mob to perform that song at my dear hip-hop album release party right, right. anyway so he plays dear hip-hop and i just remember thinking it was beautiful it was a love song to me mm -hmm. you know he had sampled the look of love by ramsey lewis it was just a beautiful piano loop and i said yo i love this one and i thought it deserved a love song but i was 17 years old and really hadn't loved to make a love right. song in that way so what did i love i love hip-hop so i decided to make it a love song about hip-hop and then i decided i don't want to i decided to make hip-hop my boy which i'm so glad i did because for the record i wrote that um in 1994 and th yes and then i used to love her came out by the end of 94 and i was like oh shit, this is so similar and I hope people don't think that I teethed him because I wrote this song. And I was lucky because I like I referenced Dear Hip Hop as my brethren and my bro. So I made it like, you know, so I made it a letter. It was a love letter to hip hop. Here's the thing. So I go to Scam's house with my lyrics now. Back then we would do all the arrangement before the recording. And he would arrange it. He made it on an SP-1200. So he knew how to create loops and do dropouts with the drums and stuff to fit the lyrics. So that we used to have those sessions before the studio. Mm -hmm. And I spit the lyrics over the beat. And he goes, you're doing it wrong, man. You're off beat. And I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, you're off. You're starting like two bars early. And I'm like, what do you mean? And I'm kind of getting like a little pissed. Like, I think I know what I'm doing. I think I can rap. And he's like, no, you're following the piano, not the drums. Because for anyone who knows this song, if you listen to Dear Hip Hop and you study the record, you'll know that it begins not on the one, but with the boom, boom, piano loop. But the drums right. don't start on the beginning of the piano loop. Right. So I was starting my rap at the beginning of the piano loop and not the drums. And uh. he's telling me I'm off. I said, fuck this beat, man. <laughs> and I was like, I don't want this beat. I was that cheesed. So what? we, yeah. We you all almost had... didn't take the Dear Hip Hop beat? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> because wow. just because I was all up in my feelings, like, what do you mean I'm off beat? You know what I mean? I so him, scam, yo. yeah. <laughs> so scam, being the producer that he is, and also being the cool ass dude that he is, was like, Dan, try it this way, and he counted me in one, two, three, and and now I get timing, I get bar counting, I get all that stuff. But when I understood the one of the drums, and I started in the right place, we arranged it correctly, and then I'm like. Okay, I like this song now. And so, and so, yeah. 
<laughs> now, I also have to tell you the story of why that's on Rap Essentials. And I'm happy to use this show. I might as well, on my 30th anniversary, use this show to make the first time that I'm going to make an official announcement that this November uh, will mark the 25th anniversary of that song being released. So I am going to be releasing Dear Hip Hop for the first time ever as a single. It'll be available on 45 on vinyl. Yeah. What? We need and, instrumental too, man. Instrumental too, yo. Yeah. <laughs> interesting you say that because i've been rummaging through my mind what should be the b-side i've thought of the remixes i've done over the years i've thought of the yeah. instrumental here's the idea that i'm currently going with and i and you guys tell me just based on the story for anybody out there who hasn't heard it yet um that the whole album is available like it's streaming everywhere dear hip-hop 20 years later Amazing. uh track number two is a song called constipated it's also produced by scam and it was recorded on the exact same day. For some history, I'm sort of a nerd when it comes to that stuff. Yep. I bet Addy is too. I remember it was December 5th, 1995. Wow. And we took the bus to Woodbridge where Frankenstein, big shout to Frankenstein, big up, big up. recorded and mixed two songs. Scam showed up with two beats, the one for Constipated, the one for Dear Hip Hop. We recorded both songs. Constipated is all about me wanting to drop my shit because every song i wrote back then was about i don't have a record out i want to put a song out look at me huh, yeah i'm sleeping on me i'm a good rapper that was everything right. so the whole song is it's about time i drop my shit and it was constant i feel constipated when i was uh i had a manager at the time big shouts to a dude named sean prasad who was managing me i can't even remember how beat factory got in touch but basically we were offered the opportunity to su submit a song for this compilation called rap essentials volume one so we had all mixed and ready to go on dat tape dear hip-hop and constipated so sean was like which song you want to go with i'm like i don't care guy i'm finally gonna have a record out he's like well we should be smart what song do you think i don't care pick take your pick and he's like i like so this was his this is the rationale that made yeah. this happen I like, this is him talking, I like Constipated better. Constipated is the harder track. So you know what we should do? Let's lead with Dear Hip Hop. Then when we release Constipated, it'll kind of show your growth as an MC, blah, blah, blah. I didn't care what his rationale was. I was like, <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah. So we gave them Dear Hip Hop. Now, that's the history Smart. of what, oh, thank God, bro, because yeah. what if I was yeah. the Constipated guy? And not it, the dear hip hop guy. It would have been a different trajectory. Ooh, absolutely. You would not be I, doing I, this interview right now, <laughs> bro. So as no, much I as mean, I love the joint, like Constipated is a dope joint, but I think it's kind of a funny story of how those two songs were, you know, anyway, that might be that's that's likely to be the B side, and uh it's already available on the album, and uh right. that's that's how it all came to be, man. Man, that's incredible. Amazing, yeah, Thank almost you. didn't happen wow, a couple of times, old. you know. <sighs> I feel like there's like a lot of songs like that, like almost happen by accident, but then turn out to be the song, you know, like yeah. it's crazy, man. There's something in the stars, man. Something just, you know, a line. Yeah, you know, I mean, yeah, you got, I got to look up above and say thank you for that one, bro. Cause I mean, look, and, and this is sort of a message for young cats out there. You know, 30 years ago today, I'm on TV. And I think after doing that rap off contest that somehow my career has begun now, of course it had, but not in the way that I thought. You're talking about traje tra yeah, trajectory, right. can't speak. That was a time, the early 90s, where, where we were under the impression that you had to sign a contract. You know what I mean? Like you got signed and that's how you release music. Right. All of this independent stuff, uploading, streaming, I mean, that was, right. we, it was unheard of at the time. So to me, um, I, I'm thinking of my career in terms of, fame and fortune you know like all the artists that we're these big fans of and what what i realized especially as you know it was a five-year process before dear hip-hop got released mm. and that's when the the whole music industry game really started kicking my ass and making me realize this ain't what you thought it was i wasn't signed i wasn't didn't have a recording contract so a couple of years after dear hip-hop this is how the monolith really decided to do things on our own we started mm -hmm. one rock records and then we put out the monolith record and then my first album and all that stuff so being independent became just sort of like you're doing it this way or you're not doing it and right. really really set it in motion so that's why a lot of artists you know the three of us included who still find a way to to contribute to this culture Indeed. do it because we have that love for it it's Indeed. not like 
we didn't get signed, so it didn't work out. Like, no, we made it work out for ourselves. There we you go. know what I mean? So um, that's the thing that I'm, I'm most proud of, man, because Dear Hip Hop, uh, like you said, something in the stars. I don't know what would have happened if it wasn't for that song, if I chose Constipated instead, if I had never shot a video for it. I don't think people would know me because back then, we had Master T and Michael Williams and those guys. Right. It was spinning on much music. You know, I will never forget, bro. One of my highlights of my life, bro, is coming off tour, this first lap of the tour, the Rap Essentials tour with me and Shot Claire and YLK, big shouts. Okay. And and um, so it was New Year's because the album came out in November. So we toured through December and then we took a break for um, New Year's and we had a New Year's party. And I'm going to tell you all straight, a couple oh, of the girls we met on tour, we, 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 we came, we brought them to this hotel flex, okay? And we're in the hotel, right. the monolith man, a bunch <laughs> of gal, and the girl I'd come with, she was, woof. And anyway, we're in the bedroom, uh, one of the rooms, one of the rooms, and we had much music on so that we could do the countdown. And right. they, were, they were doing like an urban music party, New Year's thing, blah, blah, right, blah. Right, right, and right. so they do the countdown and we count in the new year and happy new year. It's 1997 and we're drinking, we're hugging and kissing and we're doing all this stuff. And I'm thinking, OK, soon I'm going to take this girl to my room. But before I did, bro, that much music um, countdown urban party thing. Bam. Dear Hip Hop comes on. Come on. And I'm like, guy, I've never felt so dope. Like, <laughs> yo. And, you know, anyway, yeah, I'll never forget that. I'll never forget that. So if it wasn't for much music, like we had Master T on my uh, podcast. Shout outs to the Godfathers of Podcasting. Everybody checking out the Reminisce show. Um, go, go to godfathersofpodcasting.com. Um, that. So that's my podcast. Yep. And what we did, what we did was, um, you know, like I said, uh, we had Master T on the show a couple of months ago, and I'm so glad I had the opportunity uh, to tell Master T straight like I am so and I did this at my album release too. Master T was part of that and that is on YouTube and I'm so glad it was captured because you talk about giving flowers, bro. Yeah. A man yeah. like Master yeah. T, a man like Michael yeah. Williams, you know, the Pedal Baptiste, the yeah. Namagenis, the Michelle Geisters, all of the people at Much Music who are responsible for helping Canadian urban artists yes. to be given the same platform as all of these big superstars with record contracts was unbelievable. Because I what? still remember, and I know it's somewhere on VHS, the day that Dear Hip Hop debuted on uh, Rap City. They used to do this thing. You'll probably you'll probably remember this too, Addy. They used to do this thing. It was like it said something like "fresh" or they flashed something on the screen when they were playing a video. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Fresh new vibe. Fresh, fresh, new new vibe vibe. Or fresh new vibe, fresh new vibe, fresh new vibe. Yeah, that. yeah. And it was at the end of the show. They had played right. a, Shaqu a Shaquille O'Neal video, one of Shaquille O'Neal, <laughs> and they and then Dear Hip Hop, and it was Fresh New Vibe or whatever. And I'm like, right. you know, to sit there and take in. I'm just this youth from Scarborough, Come and on. this NBA legend in the making had a video, and then mine. And I said, you know, and 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 to this day, I will bring that up as an example of. What is missing for young artists today? Because, again, they put us on the same level. You watch the same show. You can see Shaquille O'Neal or Danny O. You can right. see Jay-Z and Cardinal. You know right. what I'm saying? And right. you can see, you continue with the references. Like, that's what we – exactly, bro. They had us like this. Yeah. We, I hosted Rap City. I performed live on the mix. Yeah. All that is gone. That doesn't happen anymore. Right, right. And of course, we have the internet, but it was just a different world back then. And Yo. the reason I, I, I want to say all of this is because I know if it wasn't for that, there would be no interview of you guys celebrating 30 years with me. People don't know who I am. All that shit, selling CDs at the Sky Dome or Caravana, right. it's yeah. because somebody was watching much music in 1996 and saw me. And that's, I'm so indebted to, to yeah, that man. era Yo. for helping. The whole, I, the whole thing, everything man. that happened for me. Yo, man, I'm hey, man. I'm one of those I'm one of those old, those kids, man, that was watching Rap City and and just seeing those like living examples. I'm like, yo, these guys are yeah. from Toronto yeah, and man. they're dope and they're actually on par. Like, like you were always like a lyricist to us, you know what I'm Respect. saying? Still are, you know, that standard. Always. And I was like, yo, Thank this you. is hip hop, you know what I mean? And that gave us Thank the inspiration you. to want to actually, you know, pursue it. Like oh. it, it was, it was more tangible, you know what I mean? It was like, yo, sure. like, you know. Well, and, I wanna, and, yeah. Sorry, brother. I, I just wanted to say I want to shout Maestro Fresh West because that's what, that's who it was for me. 
mm. on Electric Circus, just like how I got my start. It's just crazy how things go. Three yeah. years prior, and for anyone who knows his story, if you don't, Maestro Fresh West performed the original version of Let Your Backbone Slide on Electric Circus. An artist named Stevie B was there who was part of uh, LMR Records. Anyways, Maestro got signed off of that on LMR Records in the States and I think Attic in Canada. We all know the history there. Maestro obviously became the legend that he is. And when I saw him clad in his tuxedo doing that song, and I said, this guy's from Toronto. He was, to me, he was Canada's Big Daddy Kane. Indeed. And, and Let Your Back Own Slide was performed that day. And even though I had discovered hip hop years prior and knew that this was just for me, Maestro's performance, was what made me know I can do this. He's from Toronto. He's yes. dope. He's got yes. lyrics, style, all it. I said, man, and I didn't expect this, but sure enough, three years later, the same show would give me my little push. Man. So shouts to him. Yeah. Shouts that's to the a, show, man. Yeah. You know, that's shout out to Electric Circus. <laughs> shout sure. out to Maestro every time. And yo, shout out to you, Danny. Like, really, Danny, Thanks, you're man. a true Toronto. Scarborough, yes. lyrical, oh, hip hop, man. like hundred <laughs> percent. Like it, it's just an honor, man. I mean, things are getting tight. I mean, I, I really wanted to ask you a bit. I, I saw um I saw vertebrae and I smiled because yeah. like your acting in it is really dope. And like well, <laughs> if this has been great. Oh, we have we haven't even got we haven't even got to, you yeah. know, some of the other projects you've done, like the Dilla yeah. Donuts. I'm so happy you did yeah. that. Everything, Pickles, but like yeah. what I like, I I'm doing a bit of acting, and when I see your acting on, I, I like, I see you know, there's so many hip hop videos where it's not just the song; you have a little story to right. go along with it. Yeah. But I, yeah. I was watching, and I'm like, when the door opened, and you did the reference to Bad Boys Two, yes. and the yes. door yes. opened, and you had yeah. you have this cut eye like a real yeah. father, and, <laughs> and I was like, you're not just. I'm like, this is actual acting. You actually right. are conveying energy. I'm like, this is so yes. tight. I'm like, Danny O is a man. really good actor. And I was I like, yo, that. you did it. You know, I, I really mean it because I saw it and I was like, yo, man, like, I know it was, you were like conveying it with a story and I'm like, you're, yeah. you're a father. And I, we, we don't have the time to get into it, but Logic's a father and like, you know, we've all done that. So part two, we'd lo like get into the community yeah, stuff. Well, I just wanted to sure. rate you as an actor as well. Thank I'm like, like, damn, bro. Yeah, Thank right. you. Well, three things I want to say because uh, the yeah. Godfathers of podcasting is about to start. One, I'm 100 100% coming back. This show has been dope, Jeez. a lot of fun, Look. a lot, a lot of fun. Um, I love chopping it up with you. I'm sure we could do 10 hours cool. instead of one. Um, right. So I'll be back. If you guys do every Tuesday at 7, I'm usually good every other Tuesday at 7. Okay. And the reason for that is because of my parenting schedule. Um, and uh, obviously, as you know, with this album that's over my shoulder here, yeah, uh, yeah. It's called The Day It All Changed. This is my last oh. album, uh, my my most recent one. And um, obviously, it's about being Melina's father. My daughter turned seven a week ago. And so The hey. Day It All Changed, obviously, is her the day she was born. Uh, logic, you can, I'm sure, uh, relate. You know, it changes everything when you become a parent. Um, I'm in love with my kid. And I see the world through new eyes now. So one of the messages, there's 10 different songs with 10 different messages, but they all have something to do with the fact that I'm a dad now. So vertebrae, of course, is me visualizing, you know, a decade from now, I got a little girl. And, you know, I, that that reference came to mind of how harsh uh, Martin Lawrence's character is in Bad Boys 2 because someone's coming to pick up his daughter for a date. Right. So that. That literally that scene kind of inspired the whole song, which is why I decided to put it also in the video. And mm. it was just a lot of fun to do the video. And I figured this was the song on the album that deserved a story. And, you know, it's kind of funny to, to, to play it out the way that it did. I encourage everybody to go YouTube vertebrae. But I want to shout Freddie Fame again because he put yeah. me in touch with my homie Savvy. And that's we, that's the crew who put together this video. But also. Maestro deserves another shout for this because aside from being uh, 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 an inspiration for my MC, he too is an actor. And we did the first ever manifesto for anybody who knows about manifesto, yep. the first ever one. I performed Dear Hip Hop at it as part of what they called a Toronto mixtape, blah, blah, blah. So everyone did like a song. Maestro was part of it. Something like that. And we were backstage and uh, two things happened. Firstly, Wes was wearing a New York Yankees hat, and I gave him shit. And I said, nah, dog, you're a Toronto legend, Regin. Like, don't don't play around with him yet. Like, Come on. Everyone, 
Twitter's Twitter <laughs> Yankees because it's like a hip hop thing. I'm like, I don't give a fuck. I like baseball. And I'm a real, like, I'm serious with my baseball. Like, I'm not even joking. And as I can see, both of you are wearing gear from the city. I'm always yeah. repping Toronto. Come so, on. So I gave him shit. And you Start can out. ask Wes about this. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You can ask Wes about this if you ever talk to him. It's like, did Danny O ever give you shit for wearing a Yankees hat? And he'll probably laugh and tell you that he's been wearing Jay's fitteds ever since. <laughs> but in, in that same conversation, Wes goes, have you taken any acting classes yet? Because he knew that I had a talent agent was going on auditions. I said, no, no, not yet. He goes, take acting classes. So I've taken a bunch. Um, acting is something that you can never stop learning. Everything. You can never stop learning anything. But um, I took a bunch of those uh, classes with different coaches and different times with different groups and stuff. And that's when I started landing roles. So to so far, I have like uh, – Three feature length films, short films. I've done television. I do a bunch of commercials. My most recent project I'd like to shout out before I bounce out is called 40 Parsecs and Some Fuel. It is part of a project called 21 Black Futures. It is streaming now for free on CBC Gem. Either get the app for free or just go to the website, CBC Gem. Yeah. 21 Black Futures is 21 different short theater productions by 21 different black playwrights directed by 21 different black directors, performed by 21 different black actors. My wow. piece is the only piece that is wrapped. The dialogue is all wrapped, which is how I got the job. And uh, go and check that out. Yeah, and um, shout out to Omari Newton, the playwright, and my man Lucius, the show say the director, and to mm -hmm. CBC Gem for putting this out. It was a Black History Month uh, thing, and it's available still. Oh. So that being said, thank you, Addy, because, um, and and, those acting classes help me to know the difference between acting and pretending. Acting is not pretending. Acting is reacting with true emotion to you. So if you're given a scene or dialogue or whatever, instead of pretending that you're doing something, make the scene real to you. So what's real to me? For example, um, you know, I have experienced loss. We've all experienced loss. Right. So you might have a scene where you got to pretend like your dog was run over by a car. Well, I don't have a dog, so I'm not going to pretend. What I am going to do is reminisce on my father mm. or on my grandmother, God bless their souls. Mm -hmm. And that's a tough thing to do. That's why actors, can. the best ones get paid the big bucks because they're not pretending. They're, they're experiencing real hurt right. based on a real memory for your mm. entertainment. So when I did the whole um, scene there, Addy, that you're referring to, um, I'll be honest with you. I think I was recalling some of the baby mama drama I've dealt with. So when I opened that door, I wasn't pretending. I was cheesed. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. some people, you know, it's kind of a version of it's kind of a version of method acting, you know, but you. So for me, that's what I was taught. And it's right. worked for me to really be at one with the emotion that the character is feeling instead of pretending. So thanks for that. And um, yeah. listen, we'll chop it up more, of course, about all the things you want to chop it up, Wait, up yeah. about whenever you want me back. But listen, thank yeah. you for having me on the 30th anniversary of that Electric Circus performance. And uh, everybody, we're going to keep yes. this going on the Godfathers of Podcasting.com. So you'll see that as well. And please, whatever links you have, I'll be posting the hell out of this show, man. This was a lot of fun, man. Right? Man, we appreciate you, thank brother, you so man. so much, yo, man. You know, we're going to celebrate you and your new music coming, maybe closer to the summer. But like, yo, sure, whenever, please don't stop you want. doing all the things you're doing. Man. Uh, I'm doing Thank my best, Thank you so man. much, man. Like, oh, Brother. this is everything, man. Like, it's... Oh, Thanks, man. Too, and Thank yo, yo, you. quick, quick shout out to all the all the people tuning in. Righteous, Aaron, Kwame, Donna, Colleen, Sandy, everybody who's watching. There's, there's some real heads who are appreciating yeah. Monolith and Scarborough and you, Daniel. So thanks to all oh, the God. community support. Yes, Thank you. Man. Much Appreciate love. You, bro. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, guys, man. It's you know you guys help to keep this going, man. Without you, there's a lot of people who don't know all the shit that Daniel's doing. So respect to you. And when you want me back, I'll be back. Let's do it again. Hey, that's what's up, it. man. All right, all guys. Right, respect, right. brothers. Love. Love. Cool. Mono love. Yes, sir. Mono <laughs> love, baby. Mono live. Mono love. Yeah. <laughs> Peace, fam. All Peace. right, brother. Man. Crazy, crazy, man! Like yeah, I, I feel like we gotta crazy. just like, like take this in a little bit. Man. I didn't want to. I didn't want to sign off just yet, man. Because like, yo, we ain't signing off yet. Yeah, we gotta man. Talk, man. Yeah. man, like when he's talking, just like this, like the rap city and just like the implications. Shout out to my man Aaron, man. You know what I mean? That's that's my homie from way back in the day. He mentioned about racing home after school to catch rap city. 
Yo, that, that was a real thing, eh? Get our, v, our, our, our VHS tape to record because you don't know when's the next time you're going to catch the videos. We would have like our VHS mixtapes, you know what I mean? We would line it up to like dub. And the worst thing would be like when your tape is full and then you know that a dope yes. video is coming up. You're like, quick, I got to figure out what I'm going to dub over <laughs> to like make it happen. Yeah. Yo, man. <laughs> Either, either you had to have another tape on deck really quick, or you had yeah. to be like, I got to have this tape rewind far enough to tape something new, but not miss the video. Uh, yeah. and I'm already missing a piece. Like the yeah, science yeah. of it was so insane. You were so right, man. I, <laughs> I hadn't thought about that. Yeah. And that's such a, he dropped so many jewels. I've never heard yeah. before. That's so, yeah. he actually almost didn't choose the dear hip hop beats. That's insane. That's, crazy. That, that's like, that's literal life, a life changing decision right there in that moment. Crazy. Like the whole career trajectory. But, but yeah, man, like, uh, yeah, man. I think it was four o'clock. Well, I mean, wh I mean, Rap City moved around at different times, but gen like generally, it was like four p.m., wasn't it? Um, no, I think it was like like three thirty or something. Three thirty, four o'clock. I know there's times where it changed. I remember yeah, one so time it a a early, and then it went a little late, and then I think Rap City was like at nighttime at another time or something like that. So yeah. there was yeah. there was a time I remember. I remember there was a time where it was only on Thursdays. Um, right. Thursdays at four. Um, right. <clears throat> And then yeah, they did move it. And then yeah, they they also played it later on at night. It was like yeah, four yeah, and yeah. then eleven. So right. yeah, but then yeah. we were like young kids, we're like oh, we gotta stay up to midnight to watch these videos. But then, and then and then we got lucky when they made it like four p.m. five days a week. That's yes, 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 exactly. But those yeah, times of like, scarcity, man, we were so hungry just for for that representation to be like, yo, like this is local. Like these are actually artists, man. And, and I'd even get into like some of my, my monolith stories, man. I got a, I got quite a bit of footage of monolith performing at, at manifesto, um, performing at, um, at cool house, you know what I mean? And that, or, and, and, and like, um, what do you call it? Um, sound Academy, you know what I mean? Which is now rebel and, and just a lot of classic footage, man, that we'll get into. And I know that Danny O is also someone who, um, who, who does does work with youth, you know what I mean? So there's there's so much, man. There's so much going on, man. But yeah, Absolutely. like 3 30, exactly. Because cause we had to run home. And like, you know what I mean? <laughs> I remember that, man. Like I, I went to a school called called um Jesse Ketchum, and now that, that was a good maybe like 15 minute like run, <laughs> you know what I mean? From home, man. We would get there early, quick, fast, man. And so yeah, man, grade five, man. We were just youngins, man, like just trying trying to get that. You know, no, so man. hungry for the culture, so hungry for the culture so hungry and i remember there were certain videos that they only played once where it's like it wasn't that big but they ran it and you're like yo man they played that's that. why like, I, I never saw that yeah, video again. What happened? that's why that's why it was so exclusive and then there's like certain heads like you know i had a few brethren who had some older brothers man that had like the archives they had like a lot of taste so we would like bring that and be like yo let me borrow that and then we would get like the dub you have the two vcrs and dub them. <laughs> it's like, yo, let me get that, man. I need that one, yo. It's crazy, yo. Yeah, oh man, oh, man. those those were the days. Oh, man. Man, anyways, man, this is why we reminisce, man. This is like something that these people will never like, you know, uh, the new generation don't even know about, man. Like they, they can just go on Spotify and type in whatever, which is great. I love that too. You know what I mean? I love the fact that, that the um, accessibility, but just that like sacredness of like, you know what I mean? The, the VHS tapes and, and the documentation, man, it was, you know, something really, really, really special, man. So I'm, I mean, about. just exactly that. Just rushing home from wherever you're at to be like, yo, I only have half an hour this week to get my hip hop yeah. fix. We can't yeah. just do it literally 24-7, 365 and just type Indeed. it up conveniently on, on something that just sits there all the time. So, Indeed. I mean, you know, if we had the internet back then, obviously we would have been using it, but like we did it. So we, we did other things and... Yo, thanks and shout out to everybody that watched it. It was a very classic yeah, show. Aaron, Aaron, you're yeah. oh, I'm feeling you, fam. I don't even know you, but we all live the same rap city struggle. And no, no, yo, Kwame, yeah. mad love to Kwame. My, my boy, my boy, symbolic. You know, symbolic. But yo, just to add on some classicness, like yo, we've been doing this. Our our anniversary of the reminisce show is next week. So we've been doing this for a year straight every Tuesday. It's kind of crazy to believe, man. Shout out to everyone who's been rocking with us, man. Like we've evolved. I might even play some of our earlier episodes, man. I was looking at some of them. I'm like, well, we're just like, just just like explaining like our, our vision, you know, and, and what we hope to achieve. And and what's blessed is like, yo, like we, we, we've achieved it. 
You know what mm. I'm saying? Like we've gotten some classic interviews, met some classic people to come through and, and really, you know, share share their their aspects and, and experiences, man, with the culture, man. So so we're doing it, man. You know, and just like as Daniel said, man, it's 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 for the love, man. It's it's because we're invested in the culture and we're gonna keep doing it, man. That, that that's what it is, man. You know, that next 100%. time yes. Next time you see us, we might have like an in-studio session, man. Shout out to Manifesto, you know what I mean? Who's holding us down as always. You know, you might see this with the more professional setup, like the drinking champs and all of that, man. You know what I mean? So all the folks, man, who've been rocking with us early, man, you're getting the exclusive, man. But we're going to keep moving, man. We're going to keep moving, yo. We're going to keep moving. Thank you to all the people watching it. Yo, it don't, it's just like the content is king to me. I don't care about numbers. I care about quality and just serving right. the community. All the people who care about reminiscing and just reflecting on the past, present, and future. Righteous, Kwame, all the people. Yo, Colleen. Colleen's always in the comments. Sandra, yeah, like yeah. everybody. Like, thank you to the people that hold us down. And we're yeah. going to keep going, fam. Like, this is honestly, this is probably one of been been yeah. maybe the most stabilizing, healthy thing I've been doing consistently for the whole pandemic. So I thank you, Logic. I thank you for being a brother I to know. me and just being here. So... I just have it on my schedule Tuesdays at seven. Like I gotta I, I check it, check it with my people, check it with my people, and just get that. Same way, same, same way. Everybody in my my life know knows all that. My my you know my my kids know daughter and she knows that. Like yo seven o'clock, man. You know, you know she might pop. I'm surprised she didn't pop in, but she usually does though, man. But you already do we doing our thing, man. Shout out to Aaron, man. I got you, man. I got the hoodie for you, man. I got you, man. That's how we doing it, man. We out here. Big yeah. up to everybody. Next week, man, is our, our like one year anniversary, man. It, it's it's trippy to me, man. But shout out to you know this is I guess one of the positive sides of COVID. You know what I mean? That was created out of this. You know what I mean? Because yeah. you know we spoke about not having concerts to go to, and we want to like connect and and find ways, man. So big up to you for being consistent as well. You know what I mean? When it comes to like like hip hop in Toronto, you're like you're you you are that. You know what I mean? Everybody who comes on, you know, can can attest, man. Addy's the one in the front. Front row every show, man. Big up, big up, big up. You know what I mean? So I couldn't Thank picture you. I couldn't think of like anybody else better to do this with, man, than than yourself, man. You know what I mean? So so big up to all the work you've been doing. You know what Thank I mean? And I, I might even play some old footage of because we've been like you know doing stuff like off and on for like a while and like you know doing interviews and concert coverage. And I was going through the archives. And I'm like, oh yeah, like you know we we, we there's a lot, man. So so next week I'm gonna, I'm no, gonna close yeah. our hands, man. Hey. If you could find it, we have we I, we've still never shown anybody the uh, Manny Fresh interview we did when you oh when you looked it up. Me. Yeah, I don't. I gotta find it, man, because that was that, that was clips, man. Shout, shout out clips and nice and, and those man's. You know, I, I want to get that, man. Yeah, I don't even think I have a copy of that, man. But that would be pretty cool, man. I know that was pretty epic. Man. I'm gonna look into that. But yeah, okay, there's, there's, yeah. there's definitely yeah. a lot of like, exclusive footage, man. And we're all here, man. So we're we're gonna keep going, keep doing our thing. And yo, man, that's what it is, man. The reminisce show, man. St. Kofa, man. The traditions. You know what I mean? To go back to collect what we may have forgotten so we can move forward. So that's what it yo, is. Yo, I got I to gotta really quickly shout out Aaron right there because it, Aaron was talking about the Onyx show that I was at at Front Row at Bloor and Bathurst. And, and, and yo, like, that was one of the best shows of all time. Sticky Fingers grabbed me and body slammed me into the wall when, when they were performing Slam. And it was, I was so high on hip hop energy. Like these guys were yeah. literally body slamming. Onyx don't give no fucks. Like they're like, we're, we're doing this punk rock style. Come so on, man. I, I was so hyped off hip hop energy. Sticky fingers body slammed me and I didn't even feel it. I was like, I got body slammed man. by sticky fingers. I am so happy. Like I felt no pain in that moment. I was just I'm like, this is amazing. So, yo, That's Aaron, cool. thanks for being a real head and having, helping us reminisce because these memories are, what everything's about. Man, that's peace, man. Shout out, shout out, righteous. Yo, still got your hoodie, man. Yo, DM me your phone number, man. Like, I need to, I need to connect with you. You know what I mean? It's been way too long. I got something special for you, man. I'm gonna plug you in. But I like that, man. Two hour special. Yes. Yeah, do that. Maybe I can make it a two hour special, man. <laughs> Yo, Aaron, Aaron, we might have to have you on the show to talk about that Onyx Onyx performance because there was a riot before the show, man. It was, it was before insane. The show. Yeah, but. <laughs> But yo, we 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 right. this is this is a good thing to reminisce with the fam, man. All right, man, and we out, yo, man. We're, we're, we're gonna work on next week's show. We'll we, we'll be back here, same bad time, same bad channel, seven o'clock next Tuesday. See you all, on the one year anniversary of the yeah, reminisce man. show. All right, man. Peace, y'all. See us next week, man. Seven p.m. Reminisce, reminisce, reminisce.